I heard one of the doctors say, has anyone seen this before? Hi, I'm Nick Durazio. We're speaking today with Laura Hayward Corey about her SCAD incident. Laura, could you introduce yourself and tell you or tell us a little bit about what happened? Sure. I'm Laura Haywood Corey. I'm 55. I had my SCAD on March 30th, 2009, when I was 40 years old and training for a triathlon. It woke me up about an hour before the alarm went off, and I had what people consider classic male heart attack symptoms. It was the pain in the center of my chest that radiated down my left arm and up into my jaw. I was overheating. I was short of breath. I felt like I was going to pass out. I wanted to throw up. And the tiny rational part of my mind was checking off all these symptoms and saying, you're having a heart attack. But the rest of me was saying, I'm only 40. I had a physical a few months ago and everything was fine. I'm training for a triathlon. I'm not having a heart attack. But the pain was intense. And so I woke my husband up and we did the thing you're not supposed to do. We drove ourselves to the emergency room. And as soon as I said chest pain, they took me back. This was at UNC Hospitals in Chapel Hill. They did everything correctly. They did an EKG. They drew blood work. They did a chest x-ray. They gave me aspirin and nitroglycerin. So they treated me as if I were having a heart attack, all the while telling me, it's not your heart. You're too young. You're too fit. You're too female. It's not your heart. So... After I'd been in the ER for about an hour, my symptoms had pretty much disappeared and I felt silly for being there. But everyone reassured me, no, you did the right thing coming in. And even though the initial signs were all negative, my EKG was normal, my first round of blood work was normal, they couldn't see anything on the x-ray. And they said, you've described such classic heart attack symptoms that we're going to keep you overnight for observation, just in case. And I have to admit, the first thing I felt was relief, because since I was being admitted, then my insurance wouldn't charge me an exorbitant fee for coming to the ER for no good reason. (laughs) It's funny, the things that we have to worry about sometimes. So I was in my hospital room about 8 o'clock that night, and the doctor walked in, and I knew before he said anything. He had a sort of poleaxed look on his face, which you don't really see on doctors very often. And he said, I would have put your odds at having a heart attack at less than one in a hundred. He said, but the cardiac enzymes don't lie. You've had a heart attack. So I spent a sleepless night staring up at the ceiling, you know, just wondering why me, why now, what is going on? Uh, The next morning, so my husband came back the next morning They took me into the cardiac catheterization lab around noon. My parents drove up from Charlotte to wait in the ER with my husband and or not. They didn't wait in, they were waiting in the, in the waiting room with my husband. So they initially said, this is just going to be a quick 30 minute or so procedure. We're just going to go in, do an angiogram, look around, see what's going on and see what happened. So 30 minutes stretched into an hour, stretched into two, stretched into three, stretched into four and a half. And turns out I'd had a spontaneous coronary artery dissection. They said, we don't know why you had it. You didn't do anything to cause it. We don't know if you'll have another one. I was in the hospital for about a week they pretty much patted me on the head and sent me home and said, well, your follow-up with a cardiologist in a couple of months, and best of luck to you. So this was 2009. I'm pretty internet savvy, so I got home and started researching, and first thing that came up on a Google search was this statistic about 70% of SCADs are only discovered on autopsy. And that really shook me up. And that was pretty much the only research that was available online at the time. 
I eventually, after a bit more searching, found a group of women heart attack survivors on a site called Inspire. And in that group of women heart attack survivors was a subset of us who'd had spontaneous dissections. And in that subset, there was another woman named Catherine, and she and I discovered that we'd both applied to be women heart champions. So we were both going to be heading up to Mayo Clinic in October of 2009, where Dr. Sharon Hayes is the head of the women's cardiology clinic up there. And Catherine had already had a plan to talk to Dr. Hayes, and I was fully supportive of her. And so when Dr. Hayes heard the question, what do you know about SCAD and what are you doing about it? She was as in the dark as most other cardiologists, but she is a wonderful person and she immediately took up the challenge of researching it. And for her first research project was just testing the waters to see if doing any sort of research on SCAD was even feasible. So Catherine and I reached out to the other SCAD survivors that we knew of on that message board and Dr. Hayes's original proposal was to get the medical records and review them from 12 survivors. We were able to get 18. And that study was published in Mayo Clinic Journal Proceedings in uh, 2010, I believe. And that led to more research and the SCAD directories, and it all kind of snowballed from there. Then Bob Alico, a wonderful man who started SCAD Research Inc., because his wife, as you all know, passed away from a SCAD, and, and Bob and his family have just been tremendous allies, and SCAD Research Inc. has raised over a million dollars for Mayo Clinic research. One of the main reasons I went back to grad school at the age of 50 was so that Making art was a beneficial part of my healing process, and so as soon as I found out that art therapy is an actual profession, I knew that I wanted to do that so that I could come back to the SCAD community and offer art therapy to SCAD survivors. And I just finished my master's program in December and graduated just last month, so... I'm doing a workshop here at the SCAD Survivors Weekend, and this will be the first art therapy workshop I've been able to offer for SCAD survivors since I've graduated, and I'm probably going to cry. <laughs> Did you remember, or do you remember, how the staff first tried to determine what was going on? They first... They did all the things that you traditionally do for a potential heart attack. They took a chest x-ray. They drew blood to check troponin levels. They did EKG. And all of those were, were normal initially. Then... How did they explain, I guess, what they saw to you? At the time, they just said, you know, your blood work looks normal. We don't see any changes on your x-ray, your EKG is normal, you have normal baseline EKG. So they were talking about it may be esophageal spasms or I had just started medication for hypothyroidism and they said, well, maybe your hypothyroid medicine needs to be adjusted. And then the one that I found in my chart that they didn't express to me out loud was the possibility of a panic attack. Did they determine that it was SCAD during your first incident? Yes. they. Uh, I've only had one SCAD, so when they took me back for the angiogram, they did a twilight sedation for me, so I wasn't completely knocked out. I could, if I really, really concentrated, I could focus and hear what the discussion around me, what they were saying. And... There were three distinct things I heard. Early on in the process, I heard one of the doctors say, has anyone seen this before? 
That was not the most reassuring, but with all the meds I was on, you know, I was just kind of floating along. I just kind of said, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> then a bit later, I heard one of them ask if anyone had gone out and talked to the family. And of course, I found out later that what was supposed to be 30 minutes had stretched into four and a half hours. And they d did eventually come out and tell my husband and parents a little bit about what was going on. And then... I remember hearing them say, debating whether to put a seventh stent in. They put six stents in my right coronary artery. That's the one that dissected. And I remember hearing them debate about putting a seventh one in, but they worried that it would extend too far into the aorta. Then when they were bringing me out of the sedation, that's when the doctor told me, he said, you're very brave you've had a spontaneous coronary artery dissection and they pretty much took me back to my room at that point and they you know they said we don't know why you had it they actually had one of their cardiologists on staff who's a sports cardiologist specializing in you know athletes came and checked me out because sometimes extreme exercise can cause someone to have a, a SCAD. So I was not by any means an extreme exerciser, but they had him come and, and talk to me for a bit. They also, which I found out later was unusual, they also knew that SCADs were sometimes caused by underlying connective tissue disorders. So they didn't do this while I was in the hospital initially, but they did schedule me a month or so later to come in and get renal and carotid artery scans to check for fibromuscular dysplasia. Did you uh, go to cardiac rehab? And if so, what was your experience like? I did. It was absolutely the best thing I could do. If I could say anything, I would encourage everyone who has a SCAD to go to cardiac rehab. If your doctor doesn't mention it, push for it yourself. It was absolutely wonderful. I went three times a week for three months, and it gave me the confidence in my own body back. It really helped me. I was just so scared at first. I was terrified even just during the initial treadmill test to start with to determine what my baseline was. I was terrified during that. But, you know, you're monitored. They have nurses and a cardiologist on staff, at least they did at UNC hospitals where I did my cardiac rehab, and it really was fantastic. The, the one thing is, I was the only young woman there, and at the time my hair was down past my waist, and so I would get up at seven in the morning, and it would be me and a bunch of older men in their 60s and 70s, I would bend over and flip my hair into a ponytail and put it up on top of my head with a scrunchie to keep it out of the way during exercise. And one of the men in the group was bald on top. He's like, you think I could do that? <laughs> and, but they were a great group of people. It was just, they didn't have the best understanding of what to do sometimes with a, a younger woman in cardiac rehab. And there was a funny incident that happen, they weigh us every every time too because you don't want to retain water. So they have good reasons for somebody with classical heart failure and heart disease to want to monitor their weight. But I was a woman in childbearing years, so my weight fluctuated with where I was in my menstrual cycle. So once I stepped on a scale and I gained the usual four or five pounds that I would gain during my cycle, and they said, well, we're concerned about your sudden weight gain. And I said, it's just my period. And they said, but, but we're concerned. So the next time at cardiac rehab, we were in our cool down, and the nutritionist came in and started making a beeline for me. And pardon my language, but I just looked at her and said, oh, hell no. <laughs> and she started talking to me about the five pounds, which was already gone even at that point. And I said really loudly, so the whole room heard me, I said, it's just my period. Do you not have any women of childbearing age in this program? 
<laughs> and the instructor at the top of at the front of the room was just doing like this and trying not to laugh. Um, but that was the only issue, really. Aside from that, it really was the best thing I could have done to kind of get back on my feet, get back exercising, and I didn't do the initial triathlon that I'd been training for when I had my SCAD, but I went back and did one, the Rambling Rose, they have Rambling Rose triathlons around the country. I went back and did one 18 months after my SCAD, so. Are you taking any medications now for SCAD? I am. I'm on a baby aspirin and Plavix and Lipitor because of the stents, I'll probably need to be on those for the rest of my life, but I'm fortunate that I'm not having much in the way of side effects at the moment, so I'm tolerating them fairly well. And how do you balance, um, you know, the desire to keep safe, but also the desire to be active? You used to be triathlons and things. It gets easier with time. Uh, I was really nervous at first, and again, that was one of the benefits of cardiac rehab was it, it's kind of like training wheels. It helps you learn what you can do and still be safe, and that's really what I would advise is just you can't be completely safe. You can't live in bubble wrap, but just try and be as aware as you can. I'm wearing a medical ID necklace just in case something happens. I didn't want one. My cousin is an EMT and he suggested it when I first got out of the hospital. He said, you're 40 years old, you're in good shape. If something happens to you, heart attack or heart problems is not going to be the first thing that the EMTs think of. So I didn't want to, but yes, I, I wear a medical ID now and that's part of helping to mitigate risks and I used to not want to travel places if I didn't know where the closest trauma center was, but I've gotten a little more relaxed about that now. And if I have concerns, I'll talk to my doctor or talk with other survivors, just get other people's experiences. What would your advice be to somebody else that this happens to? Reach out, you're not alone. There's support online. You may even have a group of people locally to you, but you don't have to go through this alone. There are other people. We know what you're going through. We will be there to hold your hand virtually or in person. And I know it's scary, and you may not have gotten a lot of information in the hospital, but we're here for you. We're here. And what would you say to somebody who says, ah, this, this can't happen to me? I didn't think it would happen to me either. I was 40 years old. I was in good shape. I thought my biggest health risk at the time was, oh, it's about time to start my annual mammogram screens. Breast cancer was the biggest thing on my mind as far as health problems. Heart attacks, scads, nowhere in my mind. So if you don't think it can happen to you, believe me, it can. Is there anything I forgot to ask you that you wanted to tell everybody? Uh, I This is our 10th annual SCAD Survivors Reunion. I was here at the first one and I'm so excited to see so many faces. And I went back to grad school when I was 50 years old so I could become an art therapist and mental health counselor so that I could bring the healing benefits of art therapy to SCAD survivors. And I'm gonna be able to do that this weekend for the first time since I graduated. And I'm so excited about that. Well, thank you so much, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. We've been talking to uh, Laura Hayward-Corey. Uh, this is Nick Durazio for SCAD Research. Thanks everybody. Bye.